I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. You know, all of this scientific, philosophical, spiritual, theoretical information that is so available to us right now really begins to leave biological changes within us. Because every time you learn something new, you make a new connection in your brain. That's what learning is. Learning is forging new synaptic connections. And the Nobel Prize laureate Kandel in the year 2000 found that when people learn just one bit of information, they doubled the number of connections in their brain from 1,300 connections to 2,600 connections. But if they didn't review that information, if they didn't repeat it, if they didn't think about it or contemplate on it, those circuits pruned apart within hours or days. So if learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining those connections. Physical evidence in your brain as a result of your interaction in the environment, footprints of consciousness. But if you can take that information and apply it, personalize it, demonstrate it, modify your behaviors in some way and do something differently, get your actions equal to your intentions and your mind and body working together, you are going to run into a new experience. And when you're in the midst of an experience, all of your five senses plug you into the external environment. And as your brain is gathering all this vital sensory data, all that information rushes back to your brain and jungles of neurons organize themselves into networks, reinforcing the philosophical information, enriching the circuits in your brain because that's what experience does. And the moment those neurons string into place, the brain makes a chemical. And that chemical is called a feeling or an emotion. And in that moment, you begin to chemically teach your body to understand what your mind has intellectually understood. And we could say that knowledge is for the mind and experiences for the body. And in that moment, you are embodying the truth of that philosophy. And you're signaling new genes and new ways in rewriting a program. Emotionally teaching your body or instructing it to understand what the mind is intellectually understood. That's what experience does. So when you feel like a leader, when you feel successful, when you feel like a patient parent, when you feel compassion, now your mind and body are working together. But it's not enough to do it once. If you've done it once, it means you should be able to do it again. And if you can repeat any experience at will and do it over and over again, you are going to neurochemically condition your mind and body to work as one. And when the mind and body become one, or the body now knows how to do it as well as the mind, now it's innate in you. It's second nature. It's easy, it's familiar, it's effortless, it's who you are. In fact, you know how to do it, but you don't know how you know how, because it's become like a subconscious program. And you begin to master that philosophy. And so our job at this time in history is to go from philosopher to initiate to master. From knowledge to experience to wisdom. From mind to body to soul. And from thinking to doing to being. Learning it with your head, applying it with your hands, and knowing it by heart. And you and I have all the biological and neurological machinery to do this. And common people around the world right now are doing the uncommon. 
are healing themselves of fatal diseases, cancer, diabetes, MS, lupus, endocrine disorders, chronic pain, anxiety, depression, and even rare genetic conditions that medical science has no solution for. People are healing themselves from past scars and traumas that keep them anchored to the past, and they're reborn again in the same life. And they're creating new lives and new opportunities, creating a whole new reality. Because this is a time in history where it's not enough to know. This is a time in history to know how. And if you can combine a little quantum physics with a little neuroscience, with a little neuroendocrinology, with a little psychoneuroimmunology, with a little epigenetics, all of those sciences point the finger at possibility. And they should empower you. Because if knowledge is power, knowledge about yourself is self-empowerment. And the problem is, and most people wait for crisis, or trauma, or disease, or diagnosis, or loss. They have to reach their lowest denominator before they make up their mind to change. And my message has always been, why wait? You can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering, or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. And that if you can begin to teach people by demystifying the mystical, and science has become the contemporary language of mysticism, it is science that demystifies the mystical. And the moment you start talking about religion or culture or tradition, you're going to divide an audience. But science creates community. And I know, without a doubt now, that if you can give people sound information and nothing is left to conjecture, nothing is left to dogma, nothing is left to superstition, and those people can understand those concepts made simple, and if they can turn to the person next to them and explain it, they're beginning to wire that information in their brain. And as they describe that model of understanding, they're firing and wiring new circuits in their brain. And they're beginning to install the neurological hardware in preparation for the experience. And if they can't explain it, it's not wired in there. And once they can build a model of understanding that's reflected in neurological networks, and you can set up the conditions for them to experience it. And you give them the proper instruction. A certain percentage of those people are going to have a new experience. And my passion in the last four years has been measuring transformation. Because if I can gather more information from what I'm studying, in common people that look just like you. They're not Buddhist monks. They're not nuns with 40 years of devotion. They're not ministers. They're not priests. They're not academics. They're not scholars. They're not rabbis. They're common people just like you, of every age, of every color, of every race, of every culture, of every profession. That giving people the understanding of how to empower themselves and then do the measurements to prove it's just not a subjective experience, but we could measure it objectively.